Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna cover the top mistakes of new operators with a telehandler. Check this out. Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna cover top five mistakes that we've seen. Uh, but again, I'd love for to get comments from operators out there on what they've seen. So we'll kind of go over the top five things. Again, the basic controls I've already done in a previous video. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. We've also already done our pre-op inspection. Uh, there's another video on that as well. So now we're just gonna get into kind of the top five on things we've seen. Uh, the, the first one is really around uh, weight or configurations. Uh, really just knowing center of gravity. So these telehandlers can get, uh, you can get in danger pretty easily on these things. So you need to understand both what your lifting capacity is what you're, and what you're lifting. So, what I see a lot of new operators is they don't, sometimes you get overwhelmed, you see there are manuals, almost every single telehandler I've seen has got something like this attached to the dashboard. Uh, unless the newer one might have it automated where it's a digital display that might actually calculate it for you. But I still think you need to know old school how to do this. So, that is really knowing, and I know what attachment I have on here, these forks. So I've got all my limits here on basically the markers. So along that with knowing the configuration is knowing all the different uh, markers on your machine. So it kind of, there's three different ones that you're going to want to know of. And I'm going to pull this boom off the ground a little bit so I can. So the first one, the machine itself. So most uh, telehandlers have the capability to level themselves. So above me and you can't really see it you're probably not going to see it that well in this video but above my head and every machine is going to have a little uh like a ball level or something on there and then on this cat machine the adjustments there's a switch under here so i can go 10 degrees either way now the key here is making sure you are level before you start trying to pick up anything if you start off at an angle like this you're already you're, you're starting downhill. You're gonna end up tipping this thing. So you always wanna make sure your machine is level. You don't ever wanna make this adjustment after you've loaded and you're like up in the sky. This, before you pick up or drop off, you wanna level it like that. So that's the first one to know. The second is knowing your boom angle. And that's, there's a, on the side of the bar, the side of the boom, there's an angle attack there that'll show me uh, what angle I am because that's gonna correlate to the degree mark I see on here. And then the final piece is knowing on the side of the boom arm, all the different markers. So usually like cat goes A through H. That really depends on the side of the machine. Um, so you wanna see those markers because you're gonna need those three things to kind of make calculations in your head. And then knowing your machine limits. On this, it tells me I'm up to 8,500 pounds, but also on cat machines, the first number indicates the uh, lifting capacity or the max rating. So like a T943 is 9,000 pounds is the max. It's got a 43 foot reach is what that second. So like, a, I think it goes up to 1050 is the next one. It would be 10,000 pounds, uh, 50 foot reach. So understanding those different configurations and making sure your level is probably one of the first mistakes I see. The final piece is outriggers. This machine does not have outriggers, but you'll see a bigger machine or it's an option on the front. You can put down two legs. That's the same thing as making sure your level and set before you go in to pick up materials. Uh, that's number one, top, mis top mistake. Uh, okay, so let's go to number two uh, is lifting basically from a distance. So I'm going to go ahead and hook. We got a junk car here. So the other mistake I recognize I've seen if this car so again I got a 43 foot reach here what you don't want to do is you don't want to let's go ahead and demonstrate I'm gonna I'm level here I'm gonna give it some throttle if I know I'm going far out I do not want to extend this and then be raising it really at the same time you'll see already I can feel my back end this is about a 3,000 pound car you don't want to do that already fully extended because that's where that center of gravity is moving that whole machine in. Generally, especially if you have a heavy load, you need to understand that center of gravity is your friend to keep it right nearby 
So if I were to need to go up with this, you always want to raise your load first. And generally what you're trying to do is target where my, if I know where my endpoint is, I'm trying to target my boom and you'll get better at this as an operator to expect where you're gonna end up. But ideally you wanna end up in that one spot and then I would extend. Now this again goes into my number one mistake is knowing what my limits are on this machine. So I know this is about a 3,000 pound. I know I can't really go past, uh, let's say E, about D for that if that curves over. So I, that's where I start looking over here and I can see I'm at A right there and you're looking at the markers there. But at least I'm keeping that center of gravity because if I do feel anything, you're gonna immediately start pulling that thing back in. Same thing though when you're picking up. If I'm picking up a load, let's say on top of racks, uh, the building, whatever you're loading, always bring that in. So retract your boom, the telescopic piece, all the way. Once I'm all the way back, then bring it down. Do not, while you're extended out there, sit there and start bringing that down because that whole center of gravity is moving with you. forward a little bit and set it down. So uh, number three, uh, I call angle of attack. I've heard it called different things, but so let's say uh, this car is what I'm trying to pick up. You want to try and angle this so you can drive into it. If my track, let's say my wheels are roughly, I'm on a level parking lot here. I don't want to pick up by extending my boom. So if I just do this, the problem is you'll see if I'm not exactly at zero degrees level, I'm managing two different dynamics here. I'm going down and it's going out. So you'll see, I'm going to drive this right into the ground. So it's into the ground right now. And that just takes two different ones and then actually a third then when I have to try and angle my fork. So it is, you see how this is not easy. So a lot of new operators, they wanna try and reach into it and you're just managing too much and they're trying to wanna pick it up. And then bring it back into them. So it's just too, because you're dealing with that different dynamic there, I'm gonna set this back down. So in the other way more, you can see this is, if that, if I'm trying to pick up something up high, right now, if I try, and right now if I just drive forward, you'll see those, I'm, those forks are going the same level. I'm going at the same level I'm driving there back and forth, it's, it's directly horizontal. If I start trying to manage this with the boom and going out, you'll see I'm going up and out and I'm having to manage too. So I'm gonna bring that down and kind of show you. That's why when picking up anything, if you can drive right up to it, even if it's at a higher up, try and get that right up close because then I can manage it and I'm just like right now, my forks are right along the ground. And I'm not sitting there having to, I'm not having to manage multiple. Okay, so that's number three. Number four is really about leveling the forks. So these, uh, the machine's not auto level. So I see a lot of new operators, especially if you're up high. Let's say they're trying to pick a pallet up or something. This is extremely difficult to check what level is. I can't, I can guesstimate it, but I can't see. The best way is to get your fork set before you go pick up a load. So there's two ways I recommend either doing that. One, eye level. So if I'm at my eye level here, I can now, I can see they're curled up, I can level them out, and I can see I'm, that's level to me. Now I won't touch the forks again until I actually get under the material, and then I'll curl them up to pull it in. But that's how I can level the forks. I see operators not leveling them right when they start. Same thing right here is when I go down to the ground to pick up, I can level them there. The other way to do this though is right above the ground. So if I know if I'm picking up from ground level, level them there, I can see how far I'm off and I'm looking at my, I'm rolling my forks. Once those are level, I'm set. And I can see them go right, if I'm driving, that's gonna go right up above the ground and it's nice and level to go in there. And then once I make contact, that's when I'm gonna roll the forks, just to pull in 
that to the cap. Again, it's all about managing that center of gravity. And then same thing when you touch down, you are going to roll the forks away just knowing that you are curling them up towards you. So that's number four. Okay, my number five, uh, and I had some, you know, I'll say a runner up here is driving, uh, is really making sure you're driving in the correct mode, whether it's four wheel, two wheel, or uh, the, when you're trying to go four wheel steering, making sure you're using it, you're not, whether you're crabbing, you're having your rear tire set. Okay, my number five, and there's some runner ups of driving too, but I'm not gonna go over the crab steering and things like that. My big thing is just putting it in park. So the thing I don't like about telehandlers is, unlike other machines, a lot of them have lock levers that block the doorway. Telehandlers don't. They generally have a parking switch or there's a lever on the door. So a lot of operators I'll see trying to adjust a load, they'll jump out while it's in neutral. There are delayed reactions in these machines sometimes when they start rolling. They may not go right away. So what you don't want to do is put it in neutral, jump out. You have to make sure Parking brake, I should have a red P. It's actually engaging and locking those wheels before you get in or out of the machine. So that is my number five. What do you think? What is, if you're uh, operating one of these, give me your tips and tricks, top mistakes you've seen. Uh, big shout out and thanks to Doug Speedling Construction here in Hastings, Minnesota. They allowed us to use one of their telehandlers uh, to film this. So thanks a lot. And we'll see everyone in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.